Welcome to my interview with uh, Sam Wheeland from Black Rabbit Distillery. Now, Black Rabbit Distillery is my second um, regional venture. Last time I went down to the southeast of Melbourne to visit Kim Amos at uh, Mates Distillery. And tonight I've gone back practically due north of where I live in the southeast suburbs of Melbourne and Clayton um, to a little, basically it's a suburb of Shepparton. Okay, and Shepparton is a major fruit growing region and I had contact with Sam, had contact with his distillery, did a little bit of reviewing, knew that the gins were distinct, um, but actually hadn't met the guy. And we went and interviewed on a court Sunday and you can picture it as, as we were leaving Melbourne, it would be a foggy morning and the fog was lifting and there was sun and it's winter at the time of recording, as you can see. So lots of, you know, gorgeous autumn trees and foggy, misty landscapes, the whole lot. It was just fantastic driving up there. When we get to um, Kaala, where Black Rabbit Distillery is located, it was just this glorious winter's day. And then I sat down with Sam and met one of the most humble and modest people I've come across. And he had a fascinating story to tell. Um, and it's going to get divided into three because it's a very long interview. Um, Sam, Sam has lived a truly interesting life and has a lot to tell. And there's a fascinating story behind Black Rabbit. But enough of me talking. I think it's now we sit down, snug up with our favourite G&T, preferably one from Black Rabbit, and listen to the story that is both Sam Wheeland and um, Black Rabbit. So, I'm inside the, uh, the vibe of the Black Rabbit Distillery and with me is Sam, the, the brains, the genius, the motivation behind Black Rabbit Distillery. So, Sam, the first question is, um, you've got a background in IT. Yes. 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 Yep. Yep. So, you, you speak geek. I, I, I have done. I'm trying, I'm trying not to now, but yeah, yeah. IT was my thing for sort of 20 years or more and yeah, I've had enough of it. <laughs> the only thing I know about IT is that, um, as I found out with the, my last computer before I upgraded, is the reason why you don't keep hammers and computers in the same general area, otherwise you can spend a lot of money very quickly when they start crashing on you. Yeah, probably, probably uh, in, my, in my previous roles with IT, photocopy repairs, computers, things like that, we quite often as technicians had fun with disposing of old equipment in uh, interesting ways to take our frustrations out so yeah it's um if you've got old equipment to play with and do that do that with that's fine but yeah not new gear it gets very expensive well i got a computer that was randomly crashing and then when i only when i got my new one did i realize it had a fan speak i'm trying to run video editing software on it it was just randomly crashing and um one of my it friends who okay, ultimately built my own computer i said to him oh, what's the problem he goes oh it's a picnic and go, what computer problem is the picnic? He goes, problem in chair, not in computer. He said, boy, oh, what? And he goes, you're an idiot. You're asking it to do too much. Well, the um, the other one, the um, ID10T. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this kid kept on saying to his dad, oh, it's the ID10T um, program. Well, for in the book computer, and the father said, oh, what do you mean? He goes, dad, write it out. So ID10T. And the father, when he realised he was writing an idiot, turned around and looked and went, you're adopted. Yeah, it's a good one. The, um, there's a, a lot of acronyms around that uh, technicians use for uh, end users, but yeah, I'll leave, leave most of them in the, in the bottom drawer, I reckon, because <laughs> I get myself into too much trouble. Well, it's not like you're dealing with polite company. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's actually the reason why I married a Gen Y. Darling, explain to me why the computer's not doing such and such. We can't, darling, come and fix this for me. Yeah, it's handy to have someone who's a little bit more tech savvy hanging around, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, she's a digital native. Okay. And if, if she can't do it, I call in the um, 13 year old. They definitely know how to do it. Yeah. yeah. So, Dad, yeah. by the way, you push this button or you do that button and stuff like that. Yep. So, so you've got an IT background. You, I understand, were in Melbourne for a long time and then tree changed. Yes? Uh, yeah, to a degree. So we we both we left Melbourne when we were quite young, I suppose. Um, 
I have a very diverse background in what I've done over the years. So, um, yeah, I, I did tool making when I left school. Mm-hmm. Um, did that for a couple of years. Uh, I we haven't actually talked about my background, so I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to edit out or not. But that's no, okay. Um, so I, I've actually I went to uh, to Canberra and, and uh, on scholarship at the AIS for about two years in shooting. Okay. So I did rifle shooting from about the age of. 16, 17, and the, uh, before the um, Sydney Olympics, they did a lot of, um, uh, I suppose, talent ID, and, um, and there was a lot of, a lot of money around for, for different sports to, you know, increase the potential of athletes to, to medal at, at Sydney, mm-hmm. um, and I was on a program for a couple of years prior to Sydney with, um, with shooting, so... I moved to Canberra when I was 18, I suppose, 18 and a half, um, and stayed there for a couple of years and then moved back to Melbourne. Uh, worked in Melbourne for a little while and then competed in the Olympics in Sydney. Okay, so uh, yeah, my Olymp- Olympian, um, finally met an Olympian. And, and then after, after that, went back to Melbourne and just Worked on jobs, did some study in IT, so I did some training, um, training in IT uh, to do something for the future, and that's sort of where where my life headed for for a little while. Um, completed my study there, and uh, in about middle of t- uh, two thousand and one, I was asked whether I wanted to com- train again and and with an aim to competing at the Commonwealth Games in Manchester and went there in 2002 and gold medal and bronze medal at Manchester. And then after that I was done basically. Spent a lot, spent, spent my, my, my youth in uh, jetting around the place, spending money and not making money and decided it was time to sort of stop doing that and, and find something that I could do for for the next you know, 20 years or so. And I'd already done some IT studies, so that's where I, where I the direction I went in. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife, Fiona, she, she just finished her uh, physiotherapy degree and was looking to move out of Melbourne to, to work. She didn't want to work in a Melbourne, Melbourne hospital. So, uh, so Shepparton was the destination. And so Fee got a job up here and moved. And I kind of went along like a lost puppy dog to to come to ship. We can, we can basically stop the interview here right now. I feel so completely inadequate sitting beside a gold medalist at the Commonwealth Games. 